So, uh, using the previous theorem, we know, uh, first of all, that A is congruent to itself, mod N. Now, from the division algorithm, each integer A can be expressed as a multiple of the integer N plus a remainder, R. And so if we replace uh, this term here with this term, we have that Q times N plus R is equivalent to A, or is congruent to A mod N. Now since Q times N is congruent to zero mod N, we have that uh, R is congruent to the integer A mod N for any integer A, where R is uh, the possible remainder upon division by N, that is, uh, it is the num a number uh, from zero up to N minus one, and it, and it is exactly one of these uh, possible remainders. So uh, again, any integer a is congruent to exactly one of the possible remainders uh, upon division by uh, the uh, integer n. And so the set consisting of the possible remainders upon division by uh, n is a complete residue system. Mod n. And we give this uh, set a special name. The complete residue system mod n consisting of the possible remainders upon division by n is called the set of integers modulo n. And is denoted by the symbol for the integers with a subscript n. So the set of integers modulo n is the complete residue system consisting of the possible remainders upon division by n. That is the finite set of numbers from 0 to n minus 1. And there are n uh, such numbers. All right? Okay, so now we'll look at arithmetic uh, in the uh, set of integers, modulo uh, n. Let the elements a and b be in the set of integers, modulo n. Whoops, integers modulo n. Then we define addition. modulo n, which is denoted with a symbol for addition and a subscript n, and multiplication, modulo n, is denoted 
with a center dot and lower uh, subscript n uh, by the following. Addition modulo n of, of the two elements a and b is the remainder upon dividing the sum, the normal sum of a and b, by the energy rent. And the product, modular product of a and b, is the remainder upon dividing the normal product of a and b by the integer n. So notice that for every two uh, elements in the set of uh, integers module n, that the modular sum is also in the set, and the modular product is also in the set. Now this is a very important property of a, an, an operation that we call closure, and we'll be looking at that uh, in much more detail uh, soon. Okay, so the last theorem for this lecture. If A, B is congruent to A, C mod N, and the greatest common divisor of A and N is 1, that is, A and N are relatively prime, then B is congruent to C mod N. So notice that this statement says that if uh, we have a product, two congruent products, and the uh, element on the left on each product is relatively prime to the uh, integer n, then uh, in effect we can uh, apply the cancellation property and conclude that b is, uh, is congruent to c mod n. All right, so we'll prove this theorem. So since AB is congruent to AC mod N, we have that N divides AB minus AC. So N divides the product of A and B minus C. Since uh, a and N are relatively prime. The integer N does not divide A, but it does divide the product, and so N must divide B minus C, and so B is congruent to C mod N. Okay, so an, an important uh, subset of the uh, integers modulo n is the set, the denoted by the uh, symbol for the mod, uh, the integers mod n. Uh, with a superscript star, and this is set of all elements A in the set of integers mod n, such that the greatest common divisor of A and n is 1. That is, uh, all the elements in this set are relatively prime to the uh, given integer n. So notice that this subset, that in this subset, uh, the cancellation law holds for every element in the set, or the cancellation property. Uh, so, as we will see, this means that every element in this set 
has a multiplicative inverse. Uh, further, if if p is a prime, then this subset z sub p star, uh, all the elements in the set z sub p are relatively prime to the uh, prime number p except for the number zero. And so in the case that the, uh, the, that the integer is a prime integer, then the uh, deleted set of the, uh, that is removing the zero, number zero, from the set of uh, integers uh, modulo p is our set consisting of all those elements that are relatively prime to the uh, integer p. And uh, as we have just uh, discussed, every element in the set has a multiplicative inverse. We'll, we'll prove that at a, at a later date. Uh, but there is a preview of some of the algebraic properties of uh, both the set of uh, integers uh, modulo n and a the important subset of those uh, of that set that is or that contains uh, multiplicative inverses uh, for each of its elements. All right, so we have been looking at uh, sets of numbers, pure numbers. Next time we will look at uh, sets of mathematical objects that are not pure numbers. In particular, we'll look at matrices and uh, vectors. So I hope you have enjoyed the third lecture. Thanks for watching.